Hi hey guys, this is Deepak and in this quick video, I'll talk about Azure Firewall. Azure Firewall is Microsoft's fully managed scalable firewall as a service, which also provides source net as well as the destination net support. Azure Firewall can also be used in order to filter your traffic between two VNets or two different subnets or as well as between on-premises data center to Azure and traffic going from Azure data center to on-premises as well. You can also have a centralized logging, which can be logged to log analytics or your company's scene solution. Now let's have a look at this lab environment and let's see how can we configure Azure Firewall. Now in this example, I have got hub and spoke method, which means I have got the primary VNet where we have got the Azure Firewall deployed and I have got two other spoke VNets where I do have a couple of virtual machines. Now you could see I have given different IP addressing scheme for these VMs and I will show you how do we configure rules to allow communication between two different VMs sitting in two different VNet. Now if you talk about configuring Azure Firewall, so there are a few steps we need to take like creation of VNets. In my environment, I have created three VNets or you can test it with single VNet as well. Now you need to configure VNet pairing, you need to configure virtual machines in each and every subnet, and you need to create a Azure firewall and configure a route table. And then you can configure rules in order to allow or disallow any traffic. And if required, you can also enable diagnostic logging. Now with this, let's jump onto a demo and let's see how does Azure Firewall look like. Now I'm on portal right now and if I look for Azure Firewall, so it's a firewall, I can look for it and I can add a new firewall. Now creation of a firewall is very straightforward. I need to provide a couple of informations like the resource group name, the firewall name, um, the VNet it needs to use or I want to create a new VNet for it. The only one thing which need to be, uh, which we need to be mindful of, that Azure Firewall requires a subnet, and the name of the subnet should be Azure Firewall Subnet. So that's the requirement. If you are using existing VNet, you need to create this subnet with this name. So I've already created a firewall, and what happens when you just fill in the information, click Next, you will get this page and you will see a firewall private IP address as well as you will also see the firewall public IP address. So we need to just remember these two IP addresses because we would use it when it comes to configuring the route table as well as some rule. Now I will also show you my lab environment because I've already created a virtual machines, firewall and other configuration items. So you could see I've got three VNets and these three VNets have got different IP addressing scheme. And I also have got three uh, VMs associated with each and every VNet and their subnet. And I also have a route table. So what I will do, I'll just open up a route table because this is what defines how your firewall will work. Now, in this route table, I've configured different routes. So what I have done here is that I have configured the route. So if any traffic which is going to the internet that goes through the firewall IP address. So this is the IP address of my firewall. So this has to be my internal uh, firewall IP address. Now, apart from this, what I'm also going to do, I'm going to configure my network rules, which means if any VM needs to communicate with another VM in a different VNet, that has to go through the firewall. So based on your allow rule, disallow rule, the traffic will be allowed or dropped. So I have configured these rules and it's pretty simple. I can click add, provide a route name, provide the address prefix, and I can define the virtual appliance and the IP address of the firewall. So that's what I've done. And this is how I have created these routes. Now, what I've also done is I've associated this route and this configuration to the different subnets. So I have associated this with the subnet. 
which is with my vnet1, vnet2 and vnet3. So all the VMs are in respective, you know, vnet. So it means now all the traffic which is coming or going from those subnets would have, you know, traffic forwarded to the firewall. Now what I'll do, I'll come on firewall now and I'll select the firewall. Now when I look at the firewall, I have seen the initial configurations, I have seen the private IP address, that's what I require. Now I will configure the rules. Now these rules will help me allow the network traffic and I can restrict the network traffic as well. Now the first rule which I have created, that's a destination net rule. And what does this rule do? It helps me connect to a virtual machine which is sitting behind the firewall. It means the VM doesn't have a public IP address, but I will connect through the uh, firewall's IP address to the VM. So let's look at this rule first and how does it look like? So when I look at this rule, it says RDP from external network, the protocol I am using TCP and the source address could be any address which it is coming from and it's going to connect to destination address which is my firewall public IP and I have defined a port. I could have used 3389 but with that the challenge was that every time this would only connect to this VM. So maybe if I want to connect to another VM I can define a different port and map it to the IP address and it's uh, you know uh, port 3389. So this is the one which will distinguish that you want to connect to this VM <clears throat> or another VM. And what I've done, I've given the IP address of my VM, which is basically a private IP address and the port 3389. So if I use MSTSC and if I want to use RDP, and you could see I've filled in this information, provided the port, and if I try to connect, so what's going to happen? This will prompt me for username and password. Now I can apply the credentials. Now what it will do, it will help me connect to my VM, which is sitting behind. So let this connection uh, be completed. And you could see I'm now connected to a VM, which doesn't have a public IP address. Now, um, if I go and look at IP address, and you could see this is the IP address of this VM, 172.16.1.5. So this VM doesn't have a public IP address, it only has the private IP address. So this is the DNET rule which I can configure and allow any computer to connect to the VMs which don't have a public IP address. So maybe if I don't want to give a public IP address to my VMs, or this could be my jump host as well. So I could connect to this VM and from this VM, I can connect to the rest of my VMs. And that's pretty much I have done in my configuration. So I'll minimize this and I'll show you another rules. So once the DNET tool is configured, I have allowed my VM to be connected from outside world, I can configure my network rules. Now, what network rule does, it basically allows me to configure the communication between two different network. Now, since all the traffic is forwarded to the firewall, this rule can kick in. So what I have done, I have allowed RDP between two different VNet. So I have already done the pairing for my VNet, which means all the VNet should be able to connect to each other, but with the help of firewall rules, I'm restricting that communication. So what I've defined here is that any communication originating from 172 series IP address and going to 192 series IP address and going to port 3389, that rule is allowed. So I can have allow or deny rule. Um, and then the action will be performed. Now with this, if I want to connect to my VM, which is basically 192.168.0.4, I should be able to do that. Now, if I go back to my jump host VM, and if I open up my MSTSC, 
And if I supply the IP address, which is 192.168.0.4, and if I try to connect to it, it simply prompts me for the username and the password, and I'm good to go. And I'm going to supply the credential. And I'm connected to the VM, which doesn't have a public IP, as well as which is also not allowed directly through the firewall using the public IP address. This is basically sitting in my Azure network, and this is only contactable from the IP address range of 172.16.0.0. If I want, I can specify an absolute IP address of this jump post instead of the whole range of IP addresses. Now, this rule I can even configure when any traffic is going to my on premises network and I can define what port it can communicate on or what communication is allowed from on-premises network to Azure as well. Now I've got another VM and I've not configured the rule for it and the IP address of that VM is 10.0.1.4 and if I try to connect to that VM, I can't connect to it because I already have a pairing but I have not allowed the rule through the firewall. So this is how we configured the network rules. Now, if I close this and go to application rules. Now, in the application rule, what I can do is I can configure my FQDN tags. So FQDN tags, what they do, they basically allow, you know, help allow a certain set of, you know, URLs. So for example, for Windows Update, I don't need to allow all the URL by myself. So I don't need to hand type them. I can simply use Windows Update and Microsoft will make sure that all of these uh, URLs are allowed. So as of now, Microsoft supports FQD and tags for Windows Update, Windows Diagnostics, Microsoft Active Production Services, Backup and App Service Environment. Now you would find more text will be coming in the future as well. Now this is good. This allows my VM to update by itself. But what about if I want to allow a certain set of URLs? So let's say I want to define um, any address and I can give the complete address like 192.168 or I can use asterisk as well. And now what I'm doing is I'm allowing Microsoft.com, I'm allowing Google.com, and I'm also allowing GitHub.com. Now, if I, you know, if I want, I can add more rules, and this would basically allow different URLs from these VMs. Now, if I go back to my VM, and since I've got FQDN allowed and disallowed, now, what I'm going to do is I will open up uh, Google.com. A different URL. So there you go. The Google is working. Now, if I want to try something different, this would show the error message. So it says the request from this IP address to Amazon.com action denied to rule match proceeding with default action. So since I have only allowed specific URL, other URLs will be uh, disallowed. So that's my um, FQDN as well as URL, uh, you know, filtering. Now, this is pretty much I can do with this firewall. But let's say if I need to look at the logs and I need to find out what's going wrong in the environment. So I can also look at diagnostic logs. So I can configure my diagnostic logs. So they can be written on an Azure storage, or I can also use 
OMS. Now, let's say if I want to add diagnostic settings, I can archive it to the storage, stream it to the event hub, or I can send it to the log analytics. So in my environment, I'm using log analytics and I have configured the OMS workspace. That's where all the logs are written. Now, if I want to see these logs and if I need to troubleshoot, if there is some issue going on with the firewall, so what I need to do is I will simply uh, come back and I'll look for my OMS workspace and this is what I have configured. So you could use your existing workspace if you're using the log analytics workspace in your environment or you can create a new one as well. Now what Microsoft also provides, it helps me, you know, it, it basically helps you uh, configure the uh, designer as well. So for example, if I go on view designer, now, as of now, so there is a GitHub based uh, designer which I can import. So I'll show you the URL of that, uh, you know, GitHub location as well. So this is the designer which I've downloaded, which is Azure Docs JSON dot sample. If you click on it, you would find a JSON file and you can save it into Azure Firewall dot OMS view and you can simply come and import it here. Now, if I say import, I can do it, but I've already done it. Now, if I go on workspace, I should be able to see the firewall workspace. Now, if I look at my workspace, I see one of the workspace. And if I click on that workspace, it's going to give me a dashboard view and it will tell me what kind of rules it has allowed or disallowed and what has happened. Now, if I really want to troubleshoot this further, I can simply look into this, what has happened. Um, for example, allowed URLs over, over a period of time, like it has just tried to connect to plop.co. or, you know, whether it was allowed or, you know, disallowed. So I can, I can look at those um, information that you know what kind of food was originated from which IP address so I can I can find a lot of information in this one so maybe if I want to go on this rule and I want to see more information about it so this would give me more into the custo query you know view and I can simply edit this you know query and I can I can even use my own queries in order to uh, fetch different information. So this is how you log all the information and tells you what kind of action it has performed. The action was denied. The rule was not matched. So you get enough information in case if you need to troubleshoot if any communication is not happening. So this pretty much concludes the demo. I hope this demo was useful and this would help you, you know, deploy Azure Firewall in your environment. But if you think it's too much to configure Azure Firewall, what you can also do is you can use the Microsoft GitHub template. So in my example, I created everything from the scratch, but if you use the GitHub template, you can directly deploy it to the Azure. Now what it does, it basically deploys a firewall. Now, if I show you, um, so this is the firewall which is deployed by um, GitHub template. So that's pretty much like, you know, all the information you require, um, you know, it, it, it will do it for you. And if you, if you want, you can further configure your rule based on your requirement. So this concludes the demo and I hope you would like or you would deploy as your firewall in your environment. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day.